Hello, Aker. It's Rowan. How are you? Hello, Rowan. I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? I'm very well indeed, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure to speak with you, and thank you very much for your time. No worries. My pleasure. (laughs) We're absolutely thrilled that you'll be visiting us for Soundwave 2015, and I have to say congratulations on your magnificent work and such deserved tremendous success. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the nice words. <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, you personally started playing cello at the age of nine, is that correct? Yeah. Pretty Indeed. late for, for classical. Yeah, it, it's quite old. <laughs> <laughs> for classical Indeed. music. <laughs> and it was 1993 that Pavo, Max and Antero started playing Metallica at the Sibelius Academy in Helsinki. What led you uh, to, to link with heavy metal and cello? I don't know, you know, from the very beginning, what what's the, what's the link? I think that in our case, the main link was that uh, uh, we were big metal fans. Besides, we were classical fans. So uh, we just wanted to start to play. We, we actually realized that, okay, the cello range, we, we knew that from the other group. I, I played on the other group. It's called Total Cello Ensemble nowadays. Yeah. And I played on that, and we played all types of music except heavy metal. But but I knew that okay cello ensemble it's very suitable to play different music styles Absolutely. because of the range of of the instruments of the and and the character and the variety of of the instruments so that was the reason why we started to play those Metallica songs because we loved the music and we thought okay these are the only instruments we can play let's use those <laughs> and for us for us for us I think it was the most natural thing in the world and we were so surprised that people were so crazy about it. And uh, but um, I think you know music is always music. I I, I don't categorize music too too strongly. I listen mm-hmm. to all types of music. I can I can I can find uh, the feelings I want to hear from all all different styles. Um, so for me for me it was like I I've grown up like I'm I'm a half metal half classical guy. You know from my mm. since my <laughs> younghood. And I can't really separate. I, I can't really separate those. Understood completely. It was only three years later that you released uh, Plays Metallica by Four Cellos. Do you remember when you decided to start including your own works? I remember very well. It was actually already end of 96. I had done already maybe 30, uh, 20 to 30 different arrangements, metal arrangements for Apocalyptica. Even we wow. recorded just the Metallica ones. Mm-hmm. We, we really just went to one. So end of '96, we we did a Christmas single for Finland, and I did uh, uh, an arrangement of the Little Drama Boy, that Christmas song, and and I made the arrangement totally free from the original. You know, I wrote a lot of new parts, and that was the turning. But I was like, oh, maybe I should try to write write a full like a real own own song, and wow. I wrote Harmageddon. Well, Harmageddon yes. was the first song I wrote. And that was uh, already first single of the second rec- album. Even, even it was instrumental. It was different in the 90s. You were able to release an instrumental single. Not today anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> yes, <you> indeed. <laughs> Did you receive but, any feedback from the original artists after releasing the Inquisition Symphony? Yeah, we got a, a good feedback for for the record, and uh, I think you know after the first album, a lot of people they say that okay, this is the novelty act, it's, it's fun for one album, but you know it can't go on. Then we did the second album, then people said okay, but what X now? Now you know, mm. and then we are still here. <laughs> Indeed, yes, you are, and, and with a vengeance, <laughs> I might add. <laughs> and of yeah. course, in so we were we, we were working working hard and pushing hard against you know the wind. Uh, windmills, but you know, um, but I think that, that that was the turning point. And then after the second album, it was obvious that you know we, we started to find our identity. You know, when we did the first two albums, we were just a bunch of guys, bunch of friends, you know, who played cello and want to play heavy metal by cello. Mm. But after the second album, after you know making tours for a couple of years and making two records, we really started to find that okay, we need to find our band identity. And the only way to do that was, was to write own music. And that's why Cult was basically all about Most the original certainly. songs, which are, what, what, I, what I wrote for the band. Yes, indeed. And since then, it's been like, there's been no, 
no go back anymore for it to be a cover band, you know. Exactly. And of course, 2003, we enjoyed the release of Reflections, uh, which was all your own works. Uh, when did you first realise that your particular style was going to be successful? Uh, never. Never? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time that it's we admit of... it's very successful. <laughs> it's, it, no, it's like, it's really like, uh, we never had kind of master plan. We never thought, okay, this is what we're trying to archive. It, it, sure. it's, it's been always like we've been focusing on the album we've been doing yeah. and and just you know putting the focus on that and it looks like there's been something good on that thinking because that's the reason why we still exist that every time we just you know we, we don't think where this album is going to lead us it's like just let's make the fucking great record as, <laughs> exactly. record as we can as we ever can and we do the record and what happens after that, it's not in our hands. We do all the touring, you know, what we can. And then it comes to, when the touring comes to the end, we stop. And then we start to think for the next album. Usually we don't, you know, think, okay, then we do after this, we do that, and we do that. So that, that, that's also one reason why the, why, why the albums are so different from each other. And, and you know, the combination of, of the band and, you know, the whole, whole um structure for the albums has been every time different. Most certainly, and, and what a, a wonderful uh, theory to have. It, it must have been such a thrill and a vindication to a certain degree to have James Hetfield Metallica perform live with you. Do you remember how that felt at the time? Um, of course, that, that that's kind of, people always ask, uh, used to ask when we had a lot of guest uh, appearances on the record, People who say, well, what would be the next? What would be the ultimate thing? Obviously, of course, it's like doing doing a song with James. But um, we've been in touch with Metallica since 96. That was the first time we opened for them, wow. uh, end of 96. Uh, I, that was kind of, it was, it was bizarre because it was like a fifth public performance for us, you know, mm. for, for the crowd. And we were already opening for Metallica. That was ridiculous. <laughs> but, since, but since then uh, we've been in touch with the guys and you know that was really cool when they had this 30th anniversary a mm. um, couple of years back uh, we were on we shared the stage with them we played two songs together with them so that was yes, that was really cool absolutely tremendous uh, have you been back to australia since the 2012 tour no that's the only time i ever been in australia and that was that was really a really exciting trip, and you know we all we felt totally in love with the country and with the people people in australia and it, it we are really really excited to get back now with the with the festival tour it's really cool Indeed. and um, were you well received i don't know why, by... why, why... sorry sorry go ahead please, uh... no no i i i just don't uh, i i don't know why it took us uh, so long i think it's maybe of the because of the distance and therefore of the expenses how how um, how expensive you know for the band is to travel to Australia from Helsinki? <laughs> maybe that was the reason, or maybe the time, maybe the timing didn't work, you know, for the market. I don't know what was the reason that it took so long for us to come there. It was 2012, or Indeed. was it 2013? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And did you find you were well received by Australian audiences in the last tour? Yeah, it, it's. I, I think the Australian audience is, is great. It's, it's like a, it's like a combination of of, of UK audience and and American audience. It, it's really like people are really passionate. The whole whole scene in in Australia seems to, seems to be like that. People are really passionate. If they really like something, they really go for it. And mm -hmm. and and the club shows they were totally crazy. It was really great. And and we were really surprised that we have so much fans in Australia, and uh, and and I'm sure that um, our relation with uh, Australian fans is getting getting better and deeper in Absolutely. the future. Absolutely, uh, I agree wholeheartedly, and hopefully we'll see a multi generational appearance at your next show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it has to be said that your latest album, Shadow Maker, is. I, I don't use this word lightly. It's brilliant. Uh, it's due for release in April of this year, and I have to say congratulations. Uh, how was working with Frankie Perez? 
first of all, thank you for your nice words. <laughs> My pleasure. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that you like the uh, like the album, even you haven't heard the full album. But still, I know you have this the pre-mastered. Sample. It's only seven Maybe. tracks, but it's astounding so far. <laughs> yeah, there's some outstanding instrumental stuff coming up as well, but uh, for the record. But you know, working with Frankie, that was really cool. I think we we were really lucky that we found him because it was very beginning of the summer, like June. Uh, we decided, made the decision that okay, besides having guests on the record, let's let's try to find the one guy who can make the whole album and can make all touring with the record. So mm-hmm. we started to search people and and we got a lot of suggestions and and um, we went them through and we tested five of them, asked them to send us a recording of I'm Not Jesus. Then we picked up three of those to make uh, actually a little part of Holding My Soul of the new song. Yes. And and Frankie Frankie was obvious obvious choice and, and and it was very different to work on the record uh comparing to the previous albums because when we had the guest guest vocalist we actually most of the time many times we we just recorded the songs and some some the vocals were recorded somewhere else, you know. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have a chance to, you know, work on the arrangement and or, or on the song, you know, together with the singer. Sometimes I co-wrote the songs with the vocalist. Yes. But this time now when Frankie was involved, we, he, he came first, he came to Helsinki, you know, we rehearsed the songs in the rehearsal room. Then we went together to Nashville to the producer studio uh, for one week to do pre-production, you know, to get uh, the songs to the next level, you know, arrangement wise. Then we had another production week in Helsinki together with Frankie before we started to record the album. So it mm-hmm. was it was much more organic way of working, you know, having him in the same room for days and weeks, you know, with the material. And I think yes. uh, in general, this album is uh, the, the pro- process of preparing for this album has been much more band driven than in the past. Sometimes in the past, you know, some songs that just came you know on the very last minute and 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 we didn't have a chance to even try to gather those songs before we started to record those yes, <laughs> so and th- th- this time everything everything was more like thought through so many times played so much and uh, for everybody in the band was able to uh, put put their own personal impact on the final arrangement you know and and to define their own parts for mm-hmm. the album so so uh, it, it changed it's changed that the, having frankie really you know, gave us so much freedom. <laughs> you know, of course, and you know, uh, uh, many times, you know, in the previous albums, we had a lot of songs. We were talking with this and that and that singer, and we didn't know even in the middle of the recording which songs for for hundred percent sure that you know which songs are going to happen and which are not going to happen. You know, yes, indeed. With with in the business world, music business world, you know, there are too many managers, too many record labels involved. That's a fucking mess. And oh, now it was mm. just just the band in the room and the producer. And that was lovely. I loved it. <laughs> Wonderful. And did you find that producer uh, Nick Raskalenix was a successful influence? Yes. I, um, I, I knew his stuff from, from a long time ago already. Yeah. And and uh, I always thought that he's, he would be great. I heard good things about him from people who worked with him, that he, he's really great. And, and, you know, every time when you start to work with a new producer, you, you guys don't know exactly what to expect. So it's it's a, it's a, like an open open field, totally. Sure. And 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 he, he was just a great influence for the record. He was really great influence. He really... Uh, was able to push us, you know, to get this, the, all the things to the to the next level, and they really like. Um, I, I think he, he his impact on the arrangement and the structure of the songs it it it, it was really big. Oh, tremendous! And it's, of, it's and, almost... of the, and of the feel that you know everybody was so inspired. He was really inspiring. That's the that's the key word. He was inspiring, really inspiring. So I'm having trouble deciding what backstage amenities a cellist would desire. Do you have any peculiar requests on your rider? Um, no, not really. Not Nothing really. interesting? I think, 
No, I, I, I think our rider is quite. You know, the problem is that we have a German management, and they, uh, they, they, the Germans, they don't have humor. They don't have a sense of humor. So every time we try to do something funny, they cut it off. So, <laughs> but we, we, but, but we. We, but we used to have, we used to have, an, maybe we need to fight it again because it's a, it's a good rule. We, we have the, there needs to be on the back set, needs, there needs to be a local miss or two dogs. Indeed. Actually, to be honest, we, pre, we, we, we prefer the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perhaps we can re- request something very, very odd and interesting for Sandway yeah. to keep them on but, the you know, toes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, nothing is better on the tour, you know. You miss home and everything and you get some dogs, you know, you can spread <laughs> them and, you know, hug them. It's, it's, it's the best therapy. It's the best for therapy. <laughs> Magnificent. <laughs> but I, I have to ask you, how difficult has it been evolving in, in the Finland music scene, particularly in the early days? In, in which music scene, sorry? In, in Finland. In Finland? Um, in, in, the, in the beginning of the band, it was it was cool. You know, everybody was like blown away with the whole thing with the first record. Yeah. And then I think the classical words... Uh, and and the whole thing of the second album kind of turned against us in here, and uh, we stopped touring here in the end of nineties. Yes. And we didn't make too much noise about how successful we were outside of Finland. It was like I don't know, maybe we became too successful suddenly, and then mm. people always say that Finnish people they are very jealous. We are full na- well, we are a very small nation. And and it was kind of the feeling that you know people turned their back because we started to be too successful, and uh, I think it took almost ten years that we got it back no, in I... in here. And nowadays, of course, everybody is happy for us and and you know support us and and we are a big influence on on the music scene in general. I've been always taking part of the music policy here a bit, not too much, but a bit. Yes. And 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 I've been help I've been helping the the music export thing a lot, you know, to get money from the government and to get get you know tax regulations changed, you know, that we have stupid laws in Finland, you know, which are uh, not fair for not fair for musicians or and all kind of things that how you know can you make a corporate out of yourself, you know, like uh-huh. every other profession can can do, but no musicians can't. Yes. <laughs> and and uh, uh, all that kind of stuff. So I, I've been involved very much on, on on different kind of things, and and it, it 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 I think something about appreciation says that I I am actually at the moment I'm writing together with Perto, my other bandmate. Yeah. We are composing an an opera for the Finnish national opera. They oh, all, wonderful! They ordered a full classical opera from us. Which Wonderful. is going to be premiered next ne- next year, that um, January 2016. January is going to be the premiere, so that actually shows how the um, how the atmosphere and and how it has changed. You know, mm-hmm. that we were just in the some point we were just like a, whatever fucking losers, you know, who should play classical yeah. music and stop stop being um, stupid kids. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and now now it's like you know we're stealing the job from the classical composer. So I, I think it's pretty cool. Most certainly. Uh, I, I have to apologise. We're actually out of time, and I have so much I'd like to ask you. Hopefully, we can catch up for a chat again later on. But we're very, very excited that you're coming to Sandwave 2015, and very much looking forward to it. Congratulations again yeah. on your magnificent work so far. We are. Well, thank you very much. We are, we are so happy to come to Australia. Maybe we can we can hook up, hook up uh, uh, for another interview during the festival. That would be fantastic. I would love that. That would be brilliant. Yeah. We'll catch up in Maybe Melbourne. To have a face, face-to-face, face-to-face interview to get, you know, more deep in details. Yeah. That would be wonderful. Thank you for your confidence. <laughs> hey, that's cool. Nice, to, nice talking with you. Lovely to talk to you, I too. You. Thank you again for your time today. No problem. Thank you very much. And see Take you care, my in friend. one month or so. Yeah. Indeed, Thanks. yes. Take care, man. <laughs> uh, Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.